often we will be showing you the power and the work done equations. So let's start with the first one. If we take an object and we've got to move it, to get it to move we've got to apply a force. And obviously the bigger the object, the more force we're going to have to apply. Also, the distance that we push it is going to affect how much energy, how much work we're going to do. So the first equation is really easy. It's just the force required to move something times the distance that you move it. Force is in newtons, distance is always in meters. If it's ever given anything else, kilometers, centimeters, you always get it back into meters. The unit is joule, and that's because work done just means the energy you've used, so it's energy. Now, if we want to rearrange that, we can put that in a triangle. We can have work done is force times distance, and we can cover up the one we want and very easily rearrange that to find work done over the distance, or the distance travelled being the work done over time, uh, dis force. Now feel free to pause it at this point, copy this, this is some of your notes. Next equation we're going to use is the power equation. Power tells you how much energy you are using using per second. Per second. It's one of those words that everybody shouts out, hardly anyone ever knows what it really means. Um, and so very simply, uh, in saying energy per second, we can see at the top we have energy. Now if this is an exercise, or you using your energy, you can use the word work done. And so you may see it written in both ways, work done or energy, divided by time. And time is always in seconds. If it's given in hours, if it's given in minutes, you have to get it back into seconds. Now, the unit, bit of a tricky one. Energy is measured in joules, so one unit you can have is joule per second. However, since James Watt figured this out, we can sometimes say watts on the end as well. Again, triangle, if we want to rearrange it, and we end up with something that you may have at home, a pet. And again, cover up the one you want, we can find E is PT, and we can find T is E over T. Good point to pause, have a go copying. Now, what we did in lessons, we used it for an exercise. The first exercise we did was table, and we got somebody to lift a bag, and we knew the force of the bag, we knew its weight. Uh, so say for example it was 20 newtons, and we wanted to lift the bag from the floor up onto the table. Well to do that is going to require energy. The person will be doing some work. Now to lift it up we use work done is force times distance. And the table was about 85 centimetres. So, first thing I want you to do is pause it, and we need to find out the work done for one lift. I assume you haven't paused it, so I'm going to go straight to the next bit. We put in 20 newtons, times it by 0.85. Don't get caught out by that unit. And uh, you should get a figure around, I believe, about 17 joules off the top of my head. So, one lift, 17 joules. Now what we want to do is turn it into an exercise. So, we count how many people can do in, say, 20 seconds. So we count it up, and, for example, 20 in 20 seconds. So now we can find the total work done. We know the work done for one lift is 17 joules. We know how many lifts they've done, 20 so times the two together, and we should get something along the lines of 17 times 2, 3, 4, 0 joules. So, that's my total work done. So by the time you've finished after 20 seconds, you've burnt off 340 joules. Final bit. What about your average power? Now I've cheated here because I haven't got a calculator. I chose 20 lifts 
in 20 seconds because my total is my work done 340 divided by the time and in my case 20 which is always going to give me what I had originally let's just make a bit of room here get rid of that it's always going to give me what I had if you times a number and then divide it by itself and you end up back to 17 joules per second so the guys all chose their times they all chose uh, different weights 10 newtons or 20 newtons and they all calculated their one lift total work done and their average power we can then apply that to another experiment and they devised this one themselves and uh, this is one of those step aerobics it was a height of about 20 centimeters and they found their weight in newtons which is a force so I'd like you to find out for me and hit pause and work it out see if you're right if we were to do one step find it out if in 50 seconds we did 40 steps and finally if we did those 40 steps in a time of 50 seconds what would be the average power of that person so one step use force times distance times it by 40 to get the total energy used and then work out the average power press pause give it a go oh one thing I forgot to tell you assume a weight of 500 newtons you're not going to get far without that don't press pause now press pause right so let's give it a go one step is going to be force times distance 500 times 0.2 don't get caught out with that unit well point 0.1 of 500 is 50 so point 0.2 of 500 is 100 so 100 joules for one step we did 40 steps so 40 times 100 for thousand joules of work done we did it in 50 seconds so we want total work done 4,000 joules and we want to divide that by 50 and again don't go for a calculator rub those out how many fives in 100 20 so how many fives in 400 80 80 joules every second so to conclude in this lesson we used the work done equation force times distance we always checked our unit was in meters we also used the power equation where power is work done over time and again we never get caught out because our times are always in seconds any questions come and see me thank you